What's up, guys? BC coming at you with this year's NXT No Mercy official review. As you can see on the scoreboard, this is not your traditional main roster review, the good, the bad, and the ugly. For NXT, we are doing the green light, the yellow light, the red light review. <laughs> so how I'm going to treat this is there were six matches on this card for NXT No Mercy. Each match is going to go into one of those columns, the green, the yellow, or the red. I'm treating this as if somebody was to say, BC, I was not able to catch the event. I don't have much time later on, but I want to watch some matches. What do you recommend? Easy. I'll go to my green light column. Those are the matches you got to check out if you got the time. Any matches in the yellow light column? Those are the matches, meh, take it or leave it. If you got extra time, absolutely, check them out. But they're not the green light column. Those are the matches you got to see. Yellow light, if you got extra time. And any match that goes into the red light column, well, save yourself the time. Just check out the spoilers. Just listen to BC's review if you do got a couple extra two, three minutes to listen about that match. Simplistic. Green light, check these matches out. Yellow light, mm, only if you got extra time. Red light, save yourself the time. Nothing of substance, nothing special, nothing above average happened. All right, so that's, that's basically the rules of how we run this NXT PLE pay-per-view. There'll always be pay-per-views to BC. This is how we're going to run this review show. So, without any further ado, I say we jump right into it, and we're going to start with the NXT Tag Team Championships. This was Andre Chase, Ridge Holland of Chase U versus Axon Frazier. Spanish Fly, Phoenix Splash combo gives Axon Frazier the W and the championships. And new! Once again, we should say, Crowd was into this, seated but engaged. I want you guys to remember that, because I'm going to bring that up in, in the second match. They were seated for the majority, I believe even the finish, but they were engaged throughout. So we'll take it. Post-match is, is where the real fun happened anyway, right? It, it was Holland finally snapping, finally having enough of mediocrity. Finally having enough of following behind every one of these individuals, especially Andre Chase. So Holland snaps. He attacks. He destroys his own team. And I mean all of Chase U, with the exception of Hale, which she almost got it too for a moment. Because there was, there was a time where Holland was setting up Chase to go through the commentary table. He was going to put him through the table. And Hale is just pleading for him to stop and he's not paying attention so she goes to turn him around well she succeeded he turned around and the look in his eyes i thought he was gonna start to haul off on hail there was a time in the attitude era and coming out where where they would actually have the dudes and the gals just tow off <laughs> so it was a moment where i was like he's not is he the way he looked at hail was like you can get it too hail just crumbled to her knees in tears and holland uh, readjusted his focus back to Chase, Andre Chase, put him up on that commentary table, put his dome piece through it. Now, the commentary table did not break. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Sometimes when it doesn't break, it's an even harder impact. So Chase's dome piece bounces off of it. He bounces off the commentary table. Medical staff rushes out, immediately puts him in a neck brace. Hale is in tears. Holland has that look like enough. Now's the time. And he knows, right? It's sink or swim. His main roster run was, was just not good. Fight Club was secondary to everything. Third airy, fourth airy. It was an afterthought. Whether it was a VKM, and HHH, nobody knows what to do with a Fight Club. And even if they did, they would just be the side chicks to Sheamus anyway. It was never going to work. You add in the fact that he was still sloppy. There was still a lot of injuries that were occurring. Not just in NXT with Johnny Gargano almost hurting his neck real bad. But also main roster and what happened to Big E, obviously. And there was just a lot of timing issues. There was things he needed to clean up. Um, sometimes you go to NXT and you clean it up and it's all for the best. Sometimes you go to NXT, it just it doesn't work. It's not working. With Holland, I think it's working. 
I'm seeing a much better Holland, a much more readjusted, much more focused, much more confident Ridge Holland. So this was the, I felt a great time to do this. It went off beautifully. I think that commentary table not breaking was even better because it really sold that impact. Uh, hell in tears in her, on her knees. Everything was just done. And again, Holland destroying the entire group had to happen. If you're going to go balls to the wall, it's balls to the wall. You got to go full throttle. You're just going to take out Andre Chase and everybody runs away or, or Holland takes out one or two and then runs away from the group. Not going to happen. He's got to look like the beast. This is the moment. Sink or swim. Is Holland a major player in professional wrestling? Not just WWE or NXT. A major player or is he not? All of this goofing around for years trying to get Holland to the dance. Well, now he's there. After last night, now. It's Holland is going to be something special in this business or it's just not going to work. This is the run. I thought it was done beautifully. I loved that more than the match. The match was decent to good, by the way. Decent to good. Not going to go overboard here. On this channel, we don't over-embellish on these matches, guys. We don't yell, this is awesome, after two minutes in and then five more times during a 10-minute match. We don't do that. Post-match, though, this is why I want to be tuning into a PLE, a pay-per-view. This is why, wake up in the morning and you get excited. Oh, the PLE is tonight, right? The pay-per-view is tonight, right? It's these type of things that should be happening. It should feel like something special is happening. A culmination is, is occurring, and then off of that, a good cliffhanger, so you have to keep tuning in even after the pay-per-view. This was well done. I'm putting this into the green light. Yes. Match number one goes So it's green just light. the first match. I don't want to go on and on, and I easily could, but for this first matchup, I am putting this into the green light column because, again, this review system is set up in place so if somebody was to ask BC, I don't have a lot of time. I missed the pay-per-view, the PLE. What matches, if any, do you think I should go back and check if I do have the time? Well, listen, not only is it a good match, but it's, it's what happens afterwards. I think you really enjoy that. It's one of the big moments from the event. I would check it out if you got the time. Match number one, I'm going green light. We go match number two, TNA X Division champion Zachary Wentz defeated Wes Lee via UFO Cutter. Like match one, the crowd was into this one. The difference, unlike match one, well, this one had everybody on their feet. <laughs> Remember, in match one, I said everybody was, and I quote, seated but engaged. So you'll take it, right? Everybody's into it. You don't always got to be up and bouncing out of your seat, right? You could be in your seat in awe, like watching a good movie. You're not going to be in the movie theater bouncing up and down off your chair, right? People will probably throw you out. But, but a lot of these movies you're probably engaged with. So it's okay to be seated and engaged. Still is telling us that it's a good match. This one, you had people on their feet. Now, at a pro wrestling show, that is the desired reaction you want. <laughs> so, Zachary and Wesley definitely had that. More people on their feet for this one. Uh, that shows good match placement, by the way. When you can elevate a crowd as you progress, right? They're seated but engaged for match one. Match two, now they're on their feet. That shows you that Shawn Michaels uh, had some good match placement to start this show. Um, this was a big W for TNA, not just Zachary Wentz. Um, and that is why this is going into the green light column, guys. It absolutely is. Again, if somebody says, BC, I didn't catch the event. I don't have a lot of time later, but is there anything I should catch? Yes, that gets a green light. You got it. It was just a moment, right? When... It was one of those moments for BC where I truly am now like comprehending this TNA NXT and all the the possibilities that can stem off of it, right? Like like seeing these two in it, seeing the X Division Championship and the champion on NXT television and collecting a W off of somebody like Wes Lee, which they put so much stock in. It was just a moment, you know, when he hoisted that title afterwards, I was just thinking, dude, we are watching a TNA championship, a TNA champion who just defeated an NXT dude on an NXT show. If you got the time, just check out the moment, if at nothing else, the match. Yeah, pretty damn good. We go into match number three. This was the North American championship uh, champion Kalani Jordan, who I, I just 
she's just one of my favorites right now in the industry. From the jump, Kalani Jordan is doing it. I'm seeing. I'm seeing. It's almost like the company tried to like model her off of Mercedes, and I laughed because I'm like, you're not gonna be. There's not gonna be another Mercedes Monet, and, and there's not going to be. But I mean, I'm seeing so many similarities though. That she has natural talent. I mean, I, to think a year or two down the line, what Kalani Jordan is going to accomplish. It's wild. And Wendy Chu, I just love the character. I love Wendy Chu. So I really was going into this, not not along the same lines as Mercedes versus Britt Baker for All In Wembley Stadium. Not exactly. I had a, I had a lot more expectation for that, which unfortunately was a letdown. But I did have expectation. I did because I put so, so much stock into Kalani and Wendy Chu. Um Jordan defeats Chu. I'll go to the finish, then give my thoughts. Jordan defeats Chu via split leg moonsault pinfall. Um, Chu held her own in this matchup because Kalani, again, is just so naturally gifted. But Chu did hold her own many times where Chu simply just could not keep up with Kalani's athleticism. I literally put that in my notes. I thought that was worth mentioning. Uh, much love. I put her up on a on a pedestal just because the character, it, it, everything about Wendy Chu. It's just she belongs in wrestling. <laughs> it's the it's the best compliment I can give somebody, right? You just belong in pro wrestling. Um, but there was many times where she just could not keep up with Kalani's athleticism. It happens in wrestling a lot, actually. Um, but she tried to hold her own. There was a big botch toward the finish where Kalani was on the top rope, top of the turnbuckle. And Chu goes to scale the ropes, scale the turnbuckle, and probably like, not a belly to belly, but just kind of chuck Kalani backwards with her. The problem was that Chu just fell backwards. She just, the problem lies in the fact that she never grabbed Kalani. So Chu goes up the ropes, made it to about the second, never even touched Kalani and just started falling backwards. Kalani just panicked and like, "Uh uh-oh, this is a major botch. What do I do? So she just tried to reach out to Chu. And of course, that makes it look more goofy because she's trying to drag you off. Why would you reach out and help her drag your ass off the top rope? But Kalani was trying to save the spot. But Chu... Chu just saw what Chu, the look on Chu's eyes, right? It's like one of those things, you know, somebody's about to fall off that cliff into the great yonder ocean and they're holding on by a thread and all of a sudden you just can't hold on and all of a sudden they're like, no, Kalani's reaching out. Chu's already like, no, deuces, deuces, because she knew she was not going to be able to get Kalani. So it was a major botch if you saw it. That's why I, you know, it's a review show. We do have to mention some of these bigger botches because they do affect the match. And it took a, a, another minute for everybody kind of just settle back down and get back into the match because that was rough. And again, Kalani, this is the inexperience, but she'll get better. She'll learn. But she tried to reach out. In that moment, you just let her fall backwards. And then you have this look in your eye like, oh, she just screwed up, you know? So maybe some fans are thinking this is part of the, she screwed up. You have that look in your eyes and then you try to capitalize. You get on the top rope and you jump off. And you're hoping that Chu works with you on that. Take the move. So sometimes one wrong turns into another, right? Two bads don't make a right. So when one thing happens botch-wise, the other panics and then it becomes just a mess. Sometimes it's best just to play off of it. Let it naturally roll. and, And that's what you learn in the industry as you go. So that was the big botch. I kind of threw off the finish, but um, Kalani Kalani and Chu, the best way to put this is Chu is a better character, right? This is the best way I can give it to you guys. Chu, Wendy Chu is the better character. Kalani Jordan is just the better wrestler. So both have such bright futures, man. That's the good news, man. One is such a good character. The other is such a good wrestler. They're going to be just fine. Um, Unfortunately, as much as I praise these ladies, as much as I just love them both, I do. (laughs) And I'm so thankful we have them in pro wrestling. They got to go into the... uh, They got to go into the... uh, Man... It's got to go into the yellow light. Yellow light. I don't want to say like, you know, like, like, oh, just skip this match because it's, you know, you really want to see Wendy Chu and Kalani. There was a lot of good parts in the match too. 
Um, and you really want to be on their journey. And I, so the more Kalani and shoe matches that one can see, I want to be an advocate for that. Yellow light. If you got extra time, if, check out Kalani and Chu. NXT North American title match was match number four on this card. Champion Obafemi versus Tony D'Angelo. Tony D. Vic Joseph was talking about uh, Oba's win-loss record before this match started. And if you actually take a look at it, because BC loves this type of, I love the numbers, statistics, metrics, um, because it just, it tells us facts, right? I feel like we have enough opinion channels and people giving you their thoughts and their opinions, but like when you can actually talk like facts, like what is working, what is not, what is actually good and bad, not what we like and what we don't like, numbers a lot of times will tell us that. And it tells a story, right? Why somebody feels special and why somebody feels like just an average jobber. Wins and losses actually do matter. So they were talking about that. And if you take a deep dive into the wins and losses of Oberfemi, if you guys look at uh, this year alone, if you look at it, it tells a star-making story for Oba. 26 matches this year, Oberfemi has. 26, that's starting from January. So this year, starting from January, 26 matchups. He's lost zero. Zero. He has one draw, by the way. That was with Joe Gacy on April 2nd. That was like a no contest. Draw or no contest. But he didn't lose that, technically. So, he's got zero losses. If they can do that in NXT, why do we not see any of that on the main roster with a lot of their wrestlers? Where is this type of booking? That's how somebody feels special. If you're wondering, right, because that's inexcusable, man. You have an NXT guy, 26 and 0, basically, or 25 in, in a no contest, has lost zero matches this year. It's already September. If you're wondering, right, we might as well give you Tony D's as well. Tony D has 35 matches this year since January, top of January. 35 matchups, um, and he has won 29 of those 35. That's good. That is really good. Let me give you guys, I'll show you how good this, I'll tell you how good this is. That is an 83% winning percentage, 83%. If you're wondering, that is, let me make sure I give you the exact number. That is better than 85% of WWE's main roster. Tony D'Angelo, 83% winning percentage is 85% better than main roster. Or better than 85%, I should say. 85% of WWE's main roster cannot reach 80% winning percentage. NXT, they build the stars like that. Well, you have to do that in the main roster. You have to do that because that's how we now see subconsciously that's a winner and that Eh, I can go to the bathroom, pick up a bad habit, go get some popcorn, a soda pop. I don't have to watch this match. This dude is a, has a 40% winning percentage. <laughs> He's pretty average. Nobody wants to back an average Joe. Unless it's Joe Hendry and he's booked average, then maybe we'll still believe um, but yeah, guys, that's the, uh, I thought that was an interesting note. Just talking. I, I love how Kevin Owens brought his win loss record into his story with Cody recently. I love how, uh, Vic Joseph brought up, you, you know, the last 20 semi odd matches of Oba Femi. Pretty cool. Um, Oba Femi defeats Tony D after not one, not two, but three Oba bombs and still, your North American champion is Oba Femi. If you're wondering, if you didn't catch, if you don't watch a lot of NXT, Oba Bomb is just a power bomb. Guys, I I did have a little bit of expectation here because you know Tony D, that's my dude, and Oba Femi has been collecting some consistency and some. I, I mean, he's it's a star in the making, right? As is Tony D. But they're really giving this rocket over to Oba Femi. Really cool to see. Tony D is going to be right behind him, right? Twenty six and 0, Oba. 29 out of 35, Tony D. I mean, they're destined for greatness going forward. Guys, and I'm not even saying the match was bad, man. I, I, I mean, crowd into it. There were some good spots. This review is if you missed the event and you're saying, BC, I don't have a lot of time later, but I do want to watch some of these matchups. Was there any moments? Was there anything special? Was there anything I should, I, I should see that's going to stick out? 
Guys, this match, uh, it was simplistic to me. It ended with just the power bombs. Even the crowd that was pretty lively for it was kind of like, uh, that's it. I mean, you guys can go back and watch it. No matter where I put, no matter what light I put this under, check it out. But this match, BC would tell uh, anybody, that's going to be a red light match. That's going to go into the red. Um, it's not a match you have to go back and see. That's literally a match that you can check out in the in the spoilers and save yourself the time, the 20 some odd minutes with the introductions and all the good stuff. Again, if you have the time, you can switch that to the yellow. So I'm just going to leave it at that red light matchup. I know. I am BC, man. I really like that match. I hear you. Hey, listen, if anybody asks you like, hey, hey, dude, like I missed the event. I don't have a lot of time later, but I want to watch some of the matches. If you really loved Oba and Tony D, you thought it was extra special. It went above and beyond. Tell them that's your green light match. <laughs> that's fine for BC. I just because I know what they're capable. It's Tony D and Oba and creatively the, the wheels start spinning, right? The, the creative juices start to flow for BC. And I start thinking about all the cool things you could do, not just in the match, but post match and Tony D and his click and, and Oba Femi and the things you can do and what it could lead to after No Mercy. So when it ends with just a simplistic, the power bombs, three or 30 doesn't matter when it just ends with the power bomb and the crowd is even like, that's it. It's just like, if you're asking me, BC, I don't have a lot of time. I didn't catch the event. Which matches should I catch? No, I'm not going to tell you to watch every match just because, just because there was some good wrestling, right? Because I already told the individual, hey, you got to watch uh, Jordan and Chu if you have extra time. It's not a green light match. But check out Wendy Chu and Kalani Jordan, right? That's the future. I already said that for that. So I can't say that for every match, man. Check out Tony D and Oba. They're the future. So BC, if you're going to put Kalani and Chu in the yellow light, you, you got to put them in the yellow light. Nah, it's, I already got them in the yellow light. I can't have every match just be kind of like, eh, good wrestling. <laughs> sorry not sorry there's nothing I could do Ober and Tony D they went into the red light man read the spoilers you'll be fine Oba wins power bombs flip it if you want flip it right make that your yellow light match and, and tell Kalani Jordan and Chu Das boot to the red light Match number five, NXT Women's Championship. Champion Rock C, Roxanne Perez. I'll, she'll always be Rock C to BC and many of you guys, so we call her Rock C. Rock C versus Jada Parker, the challenger. Pop rocks to Jada on the outside. Then a second pop rocks, middle of the ring. Rock C retains her title with a big pinfall victory. Now you say BC, man. Jada's still new. We're still, it's a feel-out process. We don't know if she's truly going to make it. So how is this a big W? Guys, Jada Parker is, is trailblazing right now through NXT and the pro wrestling world. Jada Parker is the real deal. Promos are on par with those that have been in the industry for 10 years plus. Her wrestling just keeps improving. She's got the look. She gets this. Jada Parker is going to be a major part of the future of this company, this business. So this is a big W, man. Jada Parker versus Roxy. Yeah, a lot of people slept on it. BC didn't. Of course, this was the right call. There's no way Roxy drops that championship. Um, crowd chanted, this is awesome during this match. Um, you guys know how I feel about that chant. And I'm not going that far. Roxy is one of my favorites in this industry. And I have such respect for Jada Parker. Uh, I cannot. This would not be a truthful review if I'm sitting here going, the match was awesome. Because awesome to me, as I always tell you, is Shawn Michaels Undertaker-esque, right? You can go Gargano and Ciampa back in the NXT days. Matches like that, okay, we can do that. You can't just say every single match just because it's good is awesome. Um, but they got that chant, and because... You know, much love and respect to both these gals. I was like, all right, all right, put up, put the volume up a little. You, you could scream it for this match. I don't believe that it was awesome, but I'm okay with it because it's Roxy, damn it. <laughs> um, so I'm not going that far as far as awesome, but it, it was really good. The match was really good, guys. Um, and it was great seeing the gals get that love. But it wasn't just the fact that the match was good, really good. Post-match, the lights go out. The moment 
a lot of us have been waiting for. Julia has arrived. Epic face-off, Roxy and Julia. And it wasn't until that moment, right? A lot of us, we, we knew it was coming, right? This was the actual debut of Julia. She, was, she appeared on NXT television before, but this, this was the debut we've been waiting for, right? In that instance, that moment, that iconic image. The face-off, Roxy, Julia. And even though we know she's coming, she's with WWE, you're going to get that Roxy, Julia match. Until you saw that face-to-face, or at least for BC, I was like, I'm pumped for this, man. Like, when Roxy was in there with Jada, toward the finish, I literally, I said, because I was watching with a really good friend, and I said, there's just no way that, that, Jada is going to beat Roxy. And, and I just explained Roxy is just too good. So booking wise, you can't have Roxy lose. You, you just can't do it. So I'm like, Roxy, it's not happening. When Julia went face to face to Roxy, I looked at my good friend and I said, Julia could be taking that title because Julia can absolutely booking wise, story wise, wrestling believability wise, Julia actually is somebody that can beat Roxy. Julia was ranked number three in the world by reputable ranking systems. Number three in the world. Some ranking systems had her too, and I believe one even had her in the top spot, which I never for one second blinked at. I never refuted it because it's more than more than realistic that you could have her at the top of the women's wrestling world. But no matter what ranking system, if it's reputable, top five. That's Julia. And she's in NXT. And she just faced off with one of the best wrestlers right now. Booking-wise, uh, consistency-wise, actual wrestling-wise, at the young age of 20, I don't even know if she's 21 yet. 21, 22, maybe? Roxy? And she's already this good? And she's already got the rocket like this? But now she's finally taken on somebody who honestly could take that championship, Julia. Wow, what a moment. Absolute green light. That's an app, and that's what I mean. I can't tell you every match is a green light, because then if you if you told me you ain't got a lot of time and you missed the event, but you want to catch them the match, I can't tell you catch the whole event. Unless the event was that good. Then I gotta say, dude, you better find the time. Because you gotta watch the entire event. But you know, I'm trying to help out the individual say, all right, watch a couple of matches. You know, <laughs> you have, that's why Kalani and Chu and Oba and Tony D, they, they got to kind of tussle for yellow and red light because you have moments like this. I want people to see that Holland attack on Chase U and how well done that was. I want people to see Julia arrive and go face to face with Roxy. Those are the moments. That's what I want people to see. And the match. Don't forget about the match, man. Jada Parker and Roxy absolutely brought it. Here we go. Julia is here. I'm pumped, bro. When they went face to face, I I literally (laughs) looked at my friend. I said, I told you Jada is not going to beat her. Jada can't beat Roxy right now. Julia absolutely can. It was just a moment. Uh, This is great, man. Julia, Roxy, I cannot wait. I got pumped up recently on a, on a women's match like this though with uh, Mercedes and Britt Baker and I was let down. I don't think that's going to happen with these two though. Hopefully not. That's green light. I told you guys, man, that's a green light. We go into the uh, sixth match of the night. This was the main event, NXT Championship. Ethan Page, the champion versus I believe in Joe Andre. <laughs> Trick Ma- Trickmeister. Trick Williams is the special referee in this match, by the way. Um, a lot going on for the finish. Uh, keep up with me. I tried to get as much in my notes as I possibly could. Everything else, I'll just have to go on straight memory of it. But it was a convoluted, overbooked finish. I love that a lot of times, and I didn't mind it here. As long as it's well done, which it was, I like overbooked finishes. A lot going on for the finish. Paige shoves Hen- Hendry into Trick, sending Trick to the outside. With an assist from the NXT title, Paige is about to pin Hendry with the help of a second referee, but Williams stops the count literally before the three count dropped. Trick just got into the ring underneath that bottom rope. Second referee was about to count three for Ethan Page, and Trick somehow just got underneath that referee's hand. It was perfect timing. Perfect timing from Trick Williams. 
Um, and then uh, where'd I leave off there? So then Paige at that point goes to knock out Trick because he's pissed. He just stopped the count. But Trick ducks and Paige takes out the second ref. While Trick is attending to the second ref, trying to get him out of the ring or something of the sorts, Paige then kicks Joe in his mini Hendries. Low blow personified. Nate would be proud. Um, obviously, he tumbles like a, like a pile of bricks. Um, and then Paige delivers Ego's Edge for the 1-2-3 main event pinfall victory. And still... I liked all of this. The, the, the finish was just so well done. Everybody did not skip a beat. And if you're going to convolute a finish like that, you better, everybody's got to step up to the plate and hit a home run to win the game. And a lot of times, unfortunately, that doesn't happen. But at least they go for it. They went for it. Everybody stepped up to the plate and magically everybody hit the home run. Joe Hendry should not be beating Ethan Page. Like Ethan just got the championship for all intents and purposes. There's no, there's no reason to take the title off him. And when I saw Wentz... Get that big W over Wesley earlier. I knew that Hendry was absolutely losing this match. Just have fun with it. Hopefully they go out there, put on a really good match. Hopefully the creative is putting some substance into this to make this match more than just a good wrestling match. And it's fun. It's engaging. Um, and that's everything that that this was. Um, and, and then and then it was just a weird ending, right? Everything was going so good. And then PD Dunn post-match. PD Dunn attacks Trick Williams because they're going to... Is their match Tuesday, I believe? I don't know. They got their match coming up, Trick and Pete. Pete Dunn att attacks Trick Williams to end the show. And I'm like, what? Are we, what? Literally, we're just showing Pete Dunn as we fade to black. So you had, for, for in totality, you had a pretty damn good no mercy show and pete dunn is who you're gonna have finish this thing pd dunn i'm not gonna let that tarnish the uh where i place this though this is a green light it's it's tna nxt it's one of nxt's big bright new stars ethan page versus tna's big star joe hendry match was damn good the finish was a lot of fun it's a green light match you gotta find the time um, to, to, to watch that match. If you definitely want to check out some NXT, no mercy. Yeah. The main event is something you got to find time to watch uh, the finish though. I would do it with a caveat. I would say, yeah, you got to check out the main event, but you can skip out after you can skip out after you see Ethan get the pinfall victory because you're just, you're not missing any PD done attacks trick. <laughs> I mean, that's it, man. If it was, if this was the good, bad, and ugly, if that's how you're going to end your show with PD Dunn taking out Trick, that's easily a bad. And I would have to go to my unit and see if they wanted to put that into the ugly column, because PD Dunn finishing the show that you cannot do that, bro. It's it's like going, it's like graduating from college, going into the NFL or whatever, not making it, and having to go back to college, or just being on your tenth year in high school. <laughs> all the all the high schoolers are like he seems a little older you know when these dudes come back you gotta be careful it can come off as so weird and and on that same note guys there there was a vignette that played for giovanni vinci vinci's coming back to nxt i feel so bad for that dude he got done dirty ludwig's over there on the main roster right he's fucking <laughs> He's starting relationships with uh, Tiffy Time, Tiffany Stratton. He's in Germany rocking out. Gunther's the, the champion of the world. And Giovanni Vinci's back in NXT. He's going back to college. <laughs> he couldn't make it in the big leagues. I don't know if he ever really got a chance, though, man. I guess they're going to try to work a character, see if that personality and charisma is there in Giovanni. If it is, then they'll try again. I guess is what they're doing. I like Giovanni Vinci, to be honest. Uh, I don't know if he's got the it factor to be something even bigger than what he was. We'll see. But I also don't think he got the fairest of chances. That's it, guys. That's it. Match one. I say green light on that uh, tag title match, um, especially because of just the Holland attack. You know, this could be the beginning of something special, or if it's not done correctly going forward, this was the best part of it, right? <laughs> the best part was the last best part of this. But Holland, I definitely would say check that out. Green light, if you have time. Uh, match number two, just seeing TNA and NXT really definitively and watching. A, this was the first matchup that I know of 
where a big NXT on an NXT show, a big name like Wes Lee, somebody who they put a lot of stock in anyway, was beat by the TNA champion hoisting that title up on a, on NXT television. Just the moment alone, I say green light. Match number three, as much as I love these ladies, man, Kalani and Chu, I just, that's only if you have extra time. If not, it's, BC already told you, man, Chu and, and Kalani, it wasn't as good as I, I thought it could be. It's a yellow light match. Match number four, because I already gave them the yellow light. Unfortunately, Tony D and Oba got a red light. Uh, it's not worth spending the 20 minutes on. If you have the extra time, you can switch that with Kalani and Chu and make that your yellow light match. That's totally fine. But Oba and Tony D didn't do much. There was not really anything of substance or special. Oba just collects a powerbomb finish victory. Um, so those are your yellow light, red light matchups. Um, and again, match five, just, a, just not just a good match, but Julia debuting. You gotta see that. That's a green light. You have to see that match. That's top of the green light list. And then the main event, it's Joe Hendry, Ethan Page with a very fun finish. It's a green light. So that's green light, yellow light, red light, the review of NXT, no mercy 2024. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Hopefully you had a lot of fun. Hopefully we dropped some knowledge, but also, um, very entertaining, that's the goal until next time. And there will be that next time. Monday Night Raw is coming up, the Labor Day edition. Within the next 24 hours, you guys will get a Raw review. And we are off to the races. September is just starting, man. A lot of big build. Um, you got All Out coming up from All Elite Wrestling. You, uh, We're going to build to bad blood. Uh, early October, September is the build to... Uh, we have to have a, a big, big month. This cannot be like the build to Bash in Berlin. With weird matchups like Owens and, and Cody and, and Randy from SmackDown going to Raw to face Gunther. And then simplistic mutual respect finishes for both. With odd storylines the three weeks leading up. I, I mean, everything was just so weird. It's like Bash in Berlin was just oddly thrown together. With Bad Blood, let's get some of those Hell in a Cell matchups rocking. Let's, let's make this event very special. So, it's going to be a big month on the channel. Make sure you're subscribed and notified. Always smash that up if you don't mind. Helps BC know that you are fully amplified, but it also helps out the algorithm. You guys know the deal. All right, BC and the amplified unit. Sand deuces, <laughs> Yeet. Check you.